Hey everyone, this is George Kuros with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope wherever you are, you're having a wonderful day, uh, you're having some time to relax, and I thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope that each time you listen to these podcasts, they can help you in some way. Maybe they give you some practical ideas, some strategies, or just give us some time to like reflect on our practice. And as I'm recording this uh, right before August, I know that there's a lot of uncertainty about the upcoming school year. And there's so many variables that people are considering. And I understand that. But I'm also thinking about people coming into the profession as educators. And, you know, if this is their first year teaching, what is that going to look like for them? And many people that are in education, including myself, when we look back at when we first started teaching, we probably are embarrassed. And it doesn't mean that we were good. Uh, we weren't good at the time. But I think that we grow so much in the profession. And in fact, what I often say that if you don't look back, and you've taught for 10 years, 20 years, without some embarrassment, then maybe you haven't really grown in, in your teaching career. And especially in the idea of education, the whole work is about helping people grow and learn and develop. Um, do we do that ourselves? Do we do that in the profession? And I look back on some of the advice I got and some of the things that I wish I would have known at the time. And I also think about some of the worst advice um, I got as a new teacher. And I think a lot of people got this exact same piece of advice in education. Uh, the whole notion of, you know, when you're starting your first year of teaching, don't smile until Christmas or don't smile until uh, the, the new year. That you have to kind of set that, you know, you're the authority in the classroom and you're, and you're the, the person um, that, that kind of holds the knowledge and you have to teach kids to respect you. I wouldn't say that to anybody, and to be honest with you. And I know that I got that advice. Uh, like I said, many people have heard that advice in education. I think really um, one of the things that I really kind of focused on is how do you create connections? How do you build relationships? How do you make sure people feel valued? And I think that to me is more important than, you know, kind of setting this tone. And, and really, I didn't want to go for, away from my authentic self. When I first got that advice, I considered it, but I actually didn't take it. And I think a lot about, you know, some advice that, you know, people are coming into the profession. So I'm gonna give you some thoughts and some tips uh, based on an old blog post I wrote uh, years ago and talk about some of those tips um, about new teachers. But that being said, I hope that this can help people in their, you know, 30th year of their career or their first. And just something that I hope that we can share, you know, with other people. But I remember uh, my first year that pretty much every day at the end of the, at the end of the, my day teaching, I would go home and cry. Uh, I had a 30 minute drive home. A lot of those car rides, uh, if I wasn't carpooling, I would just cry the entire time and was really stressed and it was really hard. And I don't know if it was how complex the job was of like the things that you have to do in education that almost seemed overwhelming, or it was sometimes the things that happen with students, you know, that you have someone say something and you took it really personally and it would affect you or probably a combination of both. And I remember one of the things that I really learned, uh, there was a speaker that came into our school, probably my second or third year. And I remember him sharing something that I always had thought about. And it was a really simple sentence, but I really thought deeply about kind of the work that we do. And he said, never let an eight year old ruin your day. And I laughed at first, but then I, I thought about it, how many times that I took something really personally um, that a student said to me. And it wasn't really at me. It was at something they were dealing with at home. It was something that they were dealing with, you know, with their peers or something else. Because I actually, you know, a lot of times I didn't do anything. So why would I get that, that, you know, argument? And it helped me to deal with this too, to not take things personally. And I remember when I was a principal, I had a student who was having a really rough day and he was dealing with some stuff. 
and I went in to support the teachers because I had a good relationship with this kid. And, but on this one day, he didn't want to talk to me and he was swearing at me, uh, telling me F off, things like that. And I remember him looking me in the face and saying, he's, he's grade six at the time. And he said to me, you know, all my friends hate you. They hate you. And I knew he didn't mean it, but I remember saying this because I know he had a good sense of humor. And I said, well, I actually have all the 12 year old friends that I need already. So I'll be okay. And he was mad for a second. And then he started laughing because he knew kind of what was going on. So him and I talked about it after and we talked about how that language obviously is inappropriate, something that we don't want to share, but he was dealing with something that was going on at home. And I understood that. And just to kind of give yourself grace that we take a lot of things really personally, but it's not about us. It's about something else. And we're just the closest one there. And this is no less true with our students than it is sometimes in our lives. You know, the people that are closest to us, we often give them the brunt of, you know, a bad day or something that's bad that's happening. So just remember that a lot of the kids are dealing with stuff and to not take things personally. And it, it helped me. I know, I know we care about our, our students. We want them to be successful. And it could be an emotionally taxing thing, but just to, to understand that it's not personal. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some tips that I wish I would have had when I first started teaching that were really helpful, uh, could have been helpful to me. And there's some things I've learned and I'd appreciate it. You know, if, if you're watching this on YouTube, share some of your tips in the comments. I'd love to hear, you know, what advice you'd give to new teachers through the process. And so the first one I'm going to talk about is really try to build relationships right away. And when I talk about this, I'm not just meaning with your students. I'm meaning with the staff. Get to know the, the office staff as soon as possible. Get to know your custodians because they are the people that make up the school. They are the people that can help you out. And I know a lot of times the secretaries would give me tremendous help and little things I needed, just kind of like how to navigate my email, things like this. And, and, and ensure that they, they know how valued they are right away. And of course, by default, connect with your students, build those relationships with them. Don't just um, build those relationships in the classroom, spend time at recess, um, you know, just kind of having conversations. I used to play basketball with my students all the time. And I know that's something that it was appreciated and it made a huge difference in the classroom. But just make sure that you spend time getting to know your colleagues, uh, getting to know uh, the entire staff of the school, parents. You want as many people on your side as possible that can help you out. And I'll tell you, there's so many people that bring value to your work every single day um, who aren't teachers, um, but can really help you through that journey. But also understand this, that although it's important that you take time to build those relationships, some of the people that are on the staff, they might take a little bit more time to warm up to you. And I remember when I was first started teaching, um, there was one staff member who I just felt was always grumpy, didn't like me. And it was just, he took a little bit of time to warm up to people. And he actually became one of my biggest mentors in my career. But it took about four or five months before we started having conversations and connecting. And so just try not to take those things personally and just build those relationships. There's so many people in the school that want you to be successful that want to help you and so just trust that and reach out to them because i know for me i appreciate when people come to me and ask me for advice and help because it does show value it does show that you know you're needed uh, the next piece of advice i'll give you and this kind of ties into the first is that it is way better to ask questions uh, than to not know the answer and pretend you know and <laughs> you're coming in new to a, a new school, maybe um, as a first year teacher, maybe as you know, a, a teacher with many years of experience, but new to a building. And I think just asking questions, a lot of times, uh, it, we have this concern that if we ask too many questions, we're going to come off needy, or we don't know things. But I'd rather go seeking out asking questions, than to not know and make mistakes. And the, the idea is that some people, ego can get in the way and there's a certain vulnerability in asking questions. And I actually believe it's a really powerful 
sign of strength, not of weakness, that you're able to feel comfortable enough with yourself to say, I don't know. Can you help me? Can you help me with this? And like I said, connect with, you know, um, the office staff, the custodial staff, ask them for help on things, ask your administrators for help, ask the, the colleague across the way. One of the things that I was really blessed with when I first started teaching was I first started teaching in grade four and my uh, teacher partner was open to all my questions and she helped me with everything and she gave me so much confidence in the work that I was doing because she gave me so much guidance and I just so appreciated that and and, and find those people that you know um, are, are wanting to help you and wanting to connect I think that's something that's really beneficial to you so don't be scared to ask questions uh, the next piece of advice I'd give you is to call parents early with something really positive about their child. When I was an administrator, I remember one of my office staff, she had shared something with me because I wasn't a parent yet. She said, when you call home to parents with something negative, understand that you could destroy their world. Ensure that they know their kid is valued, that you value their kid even though they made a mistake. And that's something that has always really guided the ways that I try to talk to parents. And, and I, like I, I give this advice knowing that I haven't been perfect on any of these things. Um, as I'm still growing. I'm still trying to get better. But I know I would go out of my way to make contact with parents before something bad would happen, before I'd have to have a negative phone call. Because those few minutes that you take to say like, hey, um, great conversation kid. I just, I just want to let you know how I'm excited to work with them because they just seem amazing. That few minutes that you take to make those phone calls home and you connect with parents or you connect with them face to face. And I know that's harder right now, but you have those interactions with them. Not only is it make them more comfortable with you because they know you're an advocate for their child, it is time you're going to save later when you do have to have a negative conversation because those do tend to come up because now you're not in a space where you're trying to build trust starting in a negative situation. You've already done that through the process. And so make sure that you take that time to call parents. And I saw this piece of advice and, I, and it's not mine, but I just saw it recently and I, I'm sorry because I can't remember who shared it. They said, make sure that at the beginning of the year, you make that parent phone call at, to share those positive things, but also do it at the end of the year um, so that they kind of walk away being really proud about their, their kids and, and, you know, make, make sure we, we connect with the caregivers to really ensure that they know we value their kid. Um, the next thing, the next piece of advice I'd give you is to really ask yourself, like, what am I doing for the students that they can be doing for themselves? And this is a piece of advice I, I, I gleaned from my friend, AJ Giuliani. I think it's really powerful because it's really overwhelming to teach. There feels to be so much on, on, their, on your plate. And I think that some of the stuff that you hate doing, kids would love. And I know that sounds weird. Like, what could that actually be? So I'll give you a couple examples. Um, one of the things I used to do with my students was we would actually, before I'd come into school, and I've talked about this several times, um, before they'd come into the school year, I hated decorating the classroom. So we would actually do it together on the first day. And instead of me coming in two weeks early, I'd have a bunch of materials. We kind of go through that process and you know decorate the classroom. And not only was it something they loved doing, it helped me understand who they are because what were they putting up on the walls? What, what represented them? And it was something that I took off my plate, but that gave them more ownership of the classroom. Uh, in one of my roles as a, as a, ed, a tech, tech lead in my schools, I used to spend a whole bunch of time going around fixing computers because if technology is in your title as an educator, for some reason, it means that everyone believes you can fix anything with electricity. So I hated doing that. I wanted to really talk about technology in ways that we could do meaningful learning. I didn't want to spend all my time dealing with, you know, buttons and trying to fix things because that's not really my uh, strength and I don't really have a great ability at it. And I remember one time I was really frustrated doing this. And one of my students, I think this is a grade six or seven class, had said, hey, can I do that for you? I'm like, yeah, you can totally do this for me. 
And he went to the teacher's classroom, fixed the computer and came back excited. And he felt a lot of value. And it's funny because all of a sudden, uh, he saw this huge opportunity to go around and he loved doing it. But he also took more ownership. He actually, you know, worked with other students say, hey, don't mess with that computer because if, if something goes wrong, I'm going to have to fix it. So he had more, you know, value in the entire school. And because of that student, I decided, hey, like, why am I doing this? Let's actually develop a, a, a student tech team. And the students started doing some of those tasks. And, and if you look around your classroom, what are some of the things that you you know, feel overwhelmed doing that the students can actually do for you that they'll be excited about. And kind of like I've seen lots of schools with Lead Your Me programs, they have students have different roles in their classroom leading different things. And so I just think that the more we can actually um, utilize the students to lead in the classroom, not only is it take work um, off of our plates, but it gives them ownership over the classroom. I see it as a, a really positive situation in, in many uh, factors. The next one is to have a life outside of school. It is really easy to start as a teacher and to spend till 10 p.m. at a school or you know working all night. And I'll tell you, that will not last because it can't. It will overwhelm you. And I think it's really important that you find those times to connect with your friends. If you are planning till 10 o'clock every night for your students, I'm gonna challenge you a little bit and say, you're probably doing too much for kids. And it kind of goes back to the last point. What are you doing for kids they could be doing for themselves? And so try, try to ensure that you find time for your hobbies, for your family and your friends to connect with them. And I, I know that some people, honestly are going through situations and I, I saw I, someone was shared this with me that sometimes they went to school because they were avoiding you know other situations and school is their peace of mind and I understand that every person is totally different but I feel that if you become so immersed in your work you tend to lose yourself and when you start to lose yourself as a person kids only see you as a teacher and not as a human being I know that's a weird thing to say but just try to find that balance try to enjoy the things that you uh, enjoy be a bit before teaching and this doesn't mean that I don't think we have to put in a lot of effort to be a great teacher but I think that there's more to life than our jobs and are you living to work or working to live you know as the kind of the saying goes uh, the next thing I'll share with you is that tough days are going to come your way and that's totally okay you're going to have some really stressful days and you're gonna be exhausted. And as much as I'd like to say that advice I got that, hey, never let an eight-year-old ruin your day, I can't say it never happened. I can't say that, you know, some of the interactions I had didn't affect me, you know, long past that day. But I talked about this recently, and I think it's really important. When we are in education, it is imperative that every kid, when they walk into school, they get a fresh start every single day. That yeah, they might have done something wrong the, the, the day before, but we got to give them chances to start over and start fresh. It's part of the process of growing up as part of the process of being an adult. And, you know, I would say the majority of educators agree with me that or agree with me on that idea. But I also think we have to be able to give ourselves a fresh start that sometimes our biggest critic and our biggest enemy is ourselves that we get so worked up about something that sometimes we get so worked up about something and then we get worked up about getting worked up and it's this vicious cycle. And I think for me, sometimes when I'm having a really tough day, I'm like, okay, I want this day to end. So I'm going to go to bed early because if I'm sleeping, then I don't have to deal with it anymore. And then I wake up and start anew. And so you're going to have tough days, yeah, whether you're in your first month or in your you know, 50th year, but give yourself grace and just start over the next day. Give the same grace to yourself that you'd give to kids. And I think that's really important. The next one is really about who we surround ourselves with. The old adage about you are the average of the five people you spend your time with. I totally agree with that. That's something I am really thoughtful of. Who do I spend my time with? If you surround yourself, with positivity, you're going to find yourself more positive. And the opposite is true. And the idea that, you know, um, 
people are positive and they don't uh, see anything negative is not reality. It's just these are people that are looking for solutions. They understand negatives actually happen, but they are always looking to how do we actually make this better? How do we create this? If you look for um, obstacles, you'll find them. But if you look for opportunity, you'll find those as well. And I think just be thoughtful of who you spend your time with. And I'm not just talking about in education, because that is very important. But I'm also talking outside of education. It, edu teaching is an emotionally taxing, um, taxing career. And so we need people to fill our buckets to, you know, be proud. And like I said earlier, when you surround people that, you know, are positive, this doesn't mean they don't challenge you. I think challenge is really crucial to the work they do. But I think when I say this, it's about people that will challenge you, but you know, they got your back. And like I said, think about that both in and outside of school. And that kind of goes into the next one uh, that I talk about is don't get sucked into gossip. Uh, I, I know that some parts of my career, I actually wouldn't go to um, the staff lounge because I found sometimes there is a negative presence. And I think a lot of people know this, and I don't think it's every uh, staff room and I don't think it's every school and I don't think it's the majority of teachers, but I think it's really easy to kind of get sucked into gossip because we're worried that if we don't kind of partake in that, it could turn on us. But the reality is if you partake in it, it probably is happening. To you. you just don't know about it. So just try to speak positively of others. And for me, I remember I had slighted somebody one time and I remember this I said something negative about a staff room and he found out about it and he came to me and he said hey I heard you said this negative thing if you have a problem with me come talk to me and I was like you're right and I was so embarrassed but I also appreciated that he came right to me and had this conversation and I just it was a really good lesson for me it's something um, I've really thought about is that having those conversations that if you know if you have an issue just have a conversation and a lot of times uh, Jimmy Cassis will say that a lot of times issues come out because of a lack of communication not because we dislike each other but we're not communicating with one another and I think that's, that's something that's really important to me <laughs> the next uh, point I'll say is to ask for feedback early uh, too early rather than too late when I first became an educator one of the things that I did I didn't wait for my superintendent to come visit my classroom. And I didn't wait for my principal to come to my classroom to teach. I asked them to come. I asked them to show up and to, to be there. And I remember um, my principal, Kelly Wilkins, she's the best leader I've ever had. I asked her immediately because I said, I want to make sure that I'm doing the things that you hoped when you hired me. And this wasn't in my first year. This is probably... Uh, my sixth year and she gave me really incredible feedback and it wasn't all positive it was like hey like here's some really great things I see here's some things for you to consider and she just she was such a master at you know helping people get better but I know one thing that she really appreciated was I was willing to kind of say like I I want feedback because I want to grow and for me as someone who would hire educators that is one of the things that I look for more than almost anything was what I call the sponge factor is a person willing to actually get feedback. And I think that we often wait for feedback to happen, but we don't initiate, we don't necessarily ask for advice. And sometimes if we don't ask for advice early and we let problems that we don't even know exist to actually develop, it can, they become habits that are harder to break. So think about, like maybe, and it might not be, maybe you're in a position where you don't feel comfortable asking a principal or, um, or, you know, a superintendent to come in there. So maybe ask a colleague, maybe ask someone across the hallway for some feedback on some of the work that you're doing and to kind of see they develop not only, and I think this is important and not only will it help you grow in the work that you're doing, but it will also show that you value your colleagues, that you value their feedback and you want to learn from them. So as I said earlier, ask for that feedback early. Just try, don't, don't get to a point where you're, you're, you're getting it, you know, too late. And the last one I'm going to share is just, just remember why you teach. Like, why did you get an education? 
And there's a reason I say this. There's so much stuff in education that you never plan for. When you watch all the movies of the inspiring educators around the world, and you see these movies, you see them in front of kids, inspiring kids, but you don't see them doing report cards. <laughs> you don't see them with you know nights spending parent-teacher interviews, spending all this marketing. We kind of glorify um, really the good parts of education, especially the media, and you know movies and TV shows, but they don't show you the the behind the scenes, the the stuff that's really wearing, and the stuff that that actually really is tough to deal with that is overwhelming that can make us lose focus and when i say this one of the reasons i encourage people to like go out at recess and connect with students is that when you have those connections is it's a beautiful thing and it reminds us like this is why i wanted to become a teacher this is why i wanted to be here is to see these kids flourish and actually do something really incredible and I encourage administrators to always give staff those, those little reminders of why it's so important, the work that we do. You know, highlight great stories from our staff, from our students. But I also know that's not always the case. And for me, I, if I really want that, I can create that myself. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to have those great conversations with my colleagues that inspire me. I'm going to have those great conversations with kids that inspire me. And as an administrator, here's something that I, I used to deal with. I had a lot of, you know, administrative stuff that I do, emails, reports, this, that, you know, data assessments, et cetera, et cetera. And I would get caught in my office doing this and I'd be frustrated and bored and annoyed. And whenever I found that point, I would get up out of my office chair and I would just go into classrooms and I would just hang out there. And it, it literally gave me life. It fed me and I would spend more time there probably than, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't, maybe, you know, maybe I didn't spend enough time, but I would spend a lot of time and I'll tell you, it really helped me get through the minutia of some of the stuff that we have to do as educators, some of the stuff they don't tell you about. Just remember why you're there. Remember why you're there and um, always take, take advantage of the opportunity to be inspired by the people you serve because it is a, a beautiful job. And just as a bonus, one last thing to say, you're going to cry. This is a reality. You're going to cry in your job. It is emotionally taxing. It is overwhelming. Just know it's totally okay. You know, we're all going to have rough days. And I said that earlier. Just know that in education, you know, as you go into this profession, you're doing something really amazing. You are inspiring all the professions um, to do really incredible things. And that's what I do. And that is a lot of work. And Todd Whitaker says this statement is the best thing about being a teacher is that it matters. The hardest thing about being a teacher is that it matters every day. And like, I agree with that 100%. And I would just add that you make such a difference that of course it's going to be emotionally overwhelming. Just embrace those moments, kind of just embrace that time and think about the impact that you're going to have. You will never know as an educator the impact that you have on the lives of so many. And what's beautiful about that, not only do you have an impact on the lives of so many, those kids that you have an impact on, they actually go out and they have an impact on other kids, other people, other adults when they grow up. And that's because of your inspiration, because of, of all that you've done. So of course, it can be an emotionally overwhelming job because it is so valuable, the work that you do. I hope you have a great year. Um, if you're a new teacher, I hope you have an amazing career. And I just want to thank you for all you do. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.